Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, and you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Today, I'm announcing a new podcast that we're going to be producing, as well as talking about how you need to organize your team going forward and as you grow. Before we get into today's show, a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Gusto. Go to gusto.com slash bootcamp, and for three months, you can try their software completely free. You can run the payroll through it, get the automatic deposits for your employees. It's completely free, 90 days. You can try it out, and I promise you, you will continue to use it. It's only like nine bucks per person going forward, and it does all of your payroll, all your HR benefits, everything that you need to pay your people, keep track of your W-2s at the end of the year, your 1099s, etc. You definitely want to check it out. Go to gusto.com slash bootcamp. Save yourself time on payroll. Save yourself admin time, and I promise your employees will love it. Check it out today, gusto.com slash bootcamp. Now today, we are going to be talking about how to, as you grow your business, it, what was, when you when you raised a child, the way you you parented it at one years old and two years old is a lot different than the way you parented it at five and six. And it's a different way that you parented it when it was 12 and 13, very different from the way that you parented it when it was 21 and 22. And as that individual, as that child begins to grow, your parenting style, the way that you communicate with that child, the way that you reprimand that child, the way that you lead that child has to change and evolve. And so the same thing goes for a business when you as the business owner, the leader, or as if it is uh, in the anal- analogy, the parent, you have to parent your business in a different way as it begins to grow. In its infancy, when it's very small, it's very the business is very dependent on you. There's a lot of you know hand to mouth. Like with a child, you are feeding the child. You are making sure you brush the te- child's teeth. You are making sure it goes you know watching its time and uh, when it when it's sleeping versus when it's eating versus when it is playing and, and nap time. Like you're very much on their schedule, making sure it's all done right. You're micromanaging that baby's life, and you have to as a parent. That's something you have to do. But as they grow up and they grow older, you can't continue to do that. You have to change and evolve your parenting style. And the same thing goes for your business. When you're first starting out, it's very much, you're very involved. You Everything that goes with on the business, you are involved in. You are making sure that the business runs correctly. You run payroll. You do the marketing. You do the sales. You do the work itself. You do everything. But as the business begins to grow, you have to change the way that you are trying to run the business. I've seen many business owners who, in this analogy of a a child have a 18, 19 year old child and yet they're running as if it's two and three years old and micromanaging it. They are trying to uh, keep their hands in every single aspect of the business and the same way that that does not work with an 18, 19 year old, you're going to get you know, they're probably going to leave you. <laughs> um, your people within your organization, your employees, they're going to leave you if you don't continue to evolve with the growth of your company. And so this is something I've been thinking about. I have to work on this as my companies grow, as we diversify, get into other industries and things like that, and figuring out where, what my role needs to be as more of a support at the top instead of micromanaging and letting people lead within the organization. No longer am I just the sole leader, but I have to allow leaders to grow underneath me. And so it's something I've been thinking a lot about. And the big thing that we are working on right now is really changing the whole way that the, the company is organized as far as really try to create teams within the team. And so what I mean by that is as your business begins to grow, there's going to be natural silos that it that it, you know your people fall into, whether it be a department or locations or however it is. And so we've been really struggling as we've been not struggling, but we've been really comp- contemplating and thinking about how we organize our company as we begin to grow. Is it by demographic? Like we have two different shops. Do we separate those? Uh, Is it by role or function? For instance, landscaping and then lawn care and then installation of uh, artificial turf. Like do we silo and create teams within the team by using departments or demographics or and those are all good things. And if you're in a product-based business, there might be manufacturing, there might be sales, different departments, right? And so as we begin to grow and we're going, you know, growing to 20 plus people and things like that and going into 2019 already, starting to think about that, we have really developed this strategy that we're going to be testing out as far as creating teams within a team. 
and creating leaders within the organization that are responsible for these teams. So if you look at the military or you look at management in general, most people cannot really effectively manage more than four to six individuals. So when you start trying to run a business and you as the owner are managing everything within the company, if there's four to six people, it works usually. When it starts getting eight, ten people, it's very. it takes a lot of effort on your part as the entrepreneur to manage all those people effectively and them not feel like you are not involved with them or that you aren't giving them enough support. Like for them to be, for you to be called their manager, uh, if there's more than four to six people that call you their direct report, like things start to fall through the cracks. And if you're really, really gifted, maybe you can get seven, eight, nine, ten. But the problem is everything is still relying on you and the business. And if you're starting to get 10, 12 people and everything still is funneling through you and you're the bottleneck, that is a, that is a very, very uh, naive way to run your company and a very, very fragile way to build your business. Because if ever, anything ever happened to you or you got sick or you had to leave out of state for a week, like your business literally would fall apart. And so you have to be able to start thinking as the company grows and develops and matures, how do I create leaders within the team that can grow underneath me and can lead the business with or without me being present? And so what we've done is we've really thought, okay, for the organizational chart, you know, for now I'm still at the top as far as calling, you know, CEO kind of type shots, and I'm still involved on a day to day basis with a lot of the higher level things, strategy, hiring, firing, things like that, uh, training, uh, strategic thinking as far as going to new markets, things like that. I'm at the top of there. But then underneath me, I sort of have a few people that I want to go, uh, you know, be my direct reports, people that d- directly report to me, whether it be in the office or whether it be on the sales side of things. And then really below them is now what we're creating, and that is teams of, of different individuals. So what we're doing is we're creating teams of four individuals, and each team has a team leader. So there's really four individuals with a team leader, and in our company, we do landscaping and, and lawn care and things like that. This is Augusta, this this business. And so um, in this business, we have different projects. We have big landscaping projects. We have little mowing jobs that someone will knock out 20 or 30 of those in a day with, with a crew of two. Uh, and then we have uh, you know tree projects in the winter. We have all these different, usually larger products projects that take anywhere from a day to three weeks long that are big landscape installs, things like that. And so what we've been been doing in the past is run, running a very, very, uh, what I guess you call a linear kind of organizational chart. Like literally it's me, a couple people underneath me, and then everybody else below them. That's kind of how we ran it. And that works for a while, but as you begin to grow and develop, again, the same way that probably at like four or five employees, six, seven, probably six, seven employees, everything was running through me. And then now we've kind of grown and developed and now it kind of goes through other individuals and then up to me at the top. But now as we've developed, we can't no longer have me, a couple individuals underneath me direct reporting, and then everybody else. Because now that everyone else all of a sudden becomes like 20 people and it's very hard to manage that number of people. So based upon the military and what they, you know, if you listen to extreme ownership, uh, this is something that they'll talk about as far as uh, really a manager can't effectively manage more than four to six people. And so I can't have, you know, 20 plus people reporting to me in one company. And then I have other businesses that I'm running and people are reporting to me there. Like I can't effectively manage them and give them the tools and resources and time they need to grow effectively. So what we're doing is now, okay, I'm at the top. There's a few people underneath me. And then underneath them, there's going to be teams. And so those teams are going to be developed out of four four individuals per team with a team leader. That team leader can basically direct report to me. They can direct report to the people under me, but they are the individuals that are going to be responsible for the work that's being done by their team. So if there is a customer complaint, if there is an issue, they are the ones that are going to be responsible for the their team's performance. So obviously the team leader is going to be compensated correctly. They're going to be probably more experienced. They are going to be the one that we can trust to do work already uh, in the field by themselves. And they're already kind of project managing. But now when there's something that happens wrong, as far as a customer service question, or there's an issue with a customer, no longer will the office or myself or the estimator really get involved. It'll be up to the project manager to take the hits as well as take the glory of the jobs that go well and the jobs that go bad of each of their projects. 
projects and everyone underneath them inside of the uh, team is directly responsible and their direct reports. So if they have four people underneath them, they, that project manager, that team leader is really in, has to ensure that he knows that all, you know, he or she knows at any given time where all the people on their team are, where they're at in their projects, who needs support, who needs materials, who needs to communicate with the client, which which uh, 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 projects are behind schedule, which ones are ahead of schedule, thinking about and then communicating that to the correct office staff, the estimator, et cetera, the client. So that team leader is very, very much the crucial kind of you know, middleman, middle manager of the organization. And then as we grow, all we have to do is build out the number of teams. Now, eventually there has to be a project manager or someone over an operational manager over all these project managers. But for now with, you know, 20 people or so plus, you know, next year, maybe up to 30, this organizational uh, scheme will work. So again, as the company grows and develops, we have to change our organizational chart. We have to change the way that uh, there's going to be people reporting to and from individuals and make sure it's efficient and effective. And the most important thing, the reason this is mo most important is not just efficiency, super important, not just the fact that it's going to be more efficient from a, a, an economic standpoint, making more money, but most important are the individuals that are being managed, the people at the, whether it be at the bottom of the organizational chart or the middle managers, they are getting the support and resources they need from the people they are reporting to. And if there's 10 plus people that are trying to vie for someone's, uh, uh, you know, mind space, and they are trying to vie for a manager's uh, time and resources and drawing on them for questions and all of that. One of two things is going to happen. Either the manager is going to break down because like, there's just too much going on and I can't effectively manage all this and it's like too much going on. Their head's going in a hundred different directions because they have 10, 15 people reporting to them. Or two, the people, those 10 or 15 people that are reporting to that manager are going to revolt because they're not getting the, the, the resources they need. They're not getting the time they need. They're not getting the training they need and one of the biggest things I want for these team leaders to do with the three or four individuals underneath them is to really also be in charge of their personal development so they're going to be reporting to the office and to myself and uh, through to HR kind of as far as you know where are every where is everyone on their team from a you know, where are they at in their life? Where are they at? In, are they progressing from on a work standpoint? Like are they managing jobs themselves? Are they progressing? Are they be getting better? Where can we train that one individual better. Like I can't see that on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not going to be able to evaluate that. I'm not going to be able to implement different ways of training new individuals or giving them more resources or making sure that they learn a new thing, a new t uh, trade or a new uh, system or a new way of doing things, a new way of communicating with a client, things like that. I'm not going to be able to see that every day when there's so many people in the organization. So I'm starting to create these team leaders empowering them to make decisions as far as what the people underneath them need from me, need from them, need from the organization in the in terms of training, uh, personal development, benefits, compensation, like that team leader is going to be the hub in which all of those things revolve around. And so I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this works. I think it's going to make our company much more efficient. And like I said, we will just continue to build out these teams of four or five until it gets to probably where there's six there's six team leaders with four or five people underneath each of them. Then we'll have to create an operational manager by which all of those uh, team leaders will communicate through. And so that's just another evolution of the company as it grows. Obviously, when you're starting out, it's a very utopian idea to basically think that you're going to have a very flat organizational chart. There's not going to be much management. There's not Everyone's just going to have direct access to the CEO and that... Uh, and not to say that I'm trying to isolate myself or get out of the business or anything like that. It's just that you can't effectively manage, number one, from my standpoint, I can't manage you know, dozens of jobs a day. I can't do that at the same time effectively and give them the resources they need. And number two, it, it fries your brain. Uh, it gives me no, it would give me no opportunity to strategize within the business, grow the company, look for new markets, things like that, uh, buy other companies, businesses. Like it would give me no more time because I'd be so busy in the minutia of managing 10 or 12 jobs. So both directions, whether it be you as the manager, 
you losing your mind over how many people are reporting to you as well as even more so the employees that you are managing. If you have so many, they are feeling like they do not have because they know you're busy. They know that you're super busy and have a ton of stuff to do. They aren't, they're going to you know, feel like they're bugging you or they're going to feel like they shouldn't go approach you when they really should because they need a, a, some, some, some of your time. They need some guidance on a job or how they can get better at their job. And so this is what we're doing. We're going to be testing it out. I think it's going to be really cool. And so I hope that helps you a little bit. As you go into 2019, as you gr- de- start to develop and strategize for the growth of your company and you start developing your organizational chart, keep that in mind. Four to six people is the best kind of range for how many people an individual can manage. I know I'm talking to entrepreneurs, a lot of type A type people, and I believe you could probably manage eight or 10, but just simply because of your you know, the way that we can think as entrepreneurs, a lot of us, if you're born that way, like you can think in a hundred different directions and you can actually juggle the balls of eight or 10 people. The problem is either you're going to burn out or even if you don't, it's going to keep you from working on the business and thinking ahead and strategizing and thinking about the big picture, especially as your big company grows past that 10, 15 pe- person mark, you have to start doing that in order to continue growing. And the last thing you want to be is the, the hub in the middle of all the spokes and all the spokes revolve around you. And it's going to help you. It's going to help your employees. I promise you, if you talk to your employees and you have 10 or 15 direct reports right now uh, of uh, lower level people, individuals, whether it be management or, or the people actually doing the work, if you have 10 or 15 employees and they're all reporting to you, I'd sit down and talk to them and ask them what they need from you. And I promise you'll come to the same conclusion. You need to have other individuals leading within the organization and create an organization that basically manufactures leaders. So as they grow from the bottom of the organizational chart, they become a team leader. Then they can grow up to become an operational manager. Then they might even go to some sort of a chief executive position as far as in the office or in sales or some department level kind of thing. So that's just something I've been thinking about, something we're implementing, and so hopefully you can learn from that. Last thing of the day is we have launched a new podcast. So as most of you know, I am now a a gym owner. Owner, uh, bought a gym that I used to work at years ago, and we are in the midst of turning it around, making it much more efficient, much more productive, and hopefully more profitable in the long run. And so, uh, we I have a great office manager over there. Her, her name is Sammy, Sammy Anderson. And so, we have collectively created a podcast called Barbells and Business. So, really about fit the fitness industry. Uh, and all about, you know, running a a gym and we go really tactical as far as how to price memberships, how to sell personal training, how to uh, get involved in the community. We're going to go really deep. We're going to be talking about the things we're doing in our gym to turn it around and make it more successful. So number one, if you're in the, into the gym space industry, as far as fitness and things like that, you're going to definitely want to subscribe to this one. Uh, It's also a good one for everyone else out there because we talk a lot about stuff that it can be implemented in really any business. We talked about in our last episode about taking credit cards versus EFT and ACH transactions, like through uh, bank uh, bank transfers and the costs involved. We look at our P&L really in depth in the gym. And so it's going to be really, really helpful for all business owners. We will talk about culture and employees and things like that down the road, but we're still kind of developing and working on that in the gym. So that is, in the, that 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 podcast barbells and business is really going to be what landscape business course is for my landscaping company. So, landscape business course podcast and the course is really built around you know, figuring out what works and doesn't work in my landscaping company and then distributing and disseminating that to all the course members, all the podcast listeners. The same thing for barbells and business for the gym that we just bought. Uh, we, Sammy Anderson and myself, uh, she's the co-host, I'm the co-host, and we kind of do it together as far as uh, you know what, what what's working in the gym what's not working what are we trying what's successful what's not successful and so I hope we can be the guinea pigs to really help someone else grow their gym grow their business and so again if regardless of whether or not you're in the gym space definitely take a listen or two uh, listen to the first episode where we talk about uh, ourselves I talk about myself and then what I did in the fitness industry and then Sammy she was you know, way beyond me as far as what she's done in the fitness industry, uh, doing uh, performing and things like that. And so go, go check it out. 
uh, it's on iTunes and different places on Stitcher, things like that. We are working on developing that, growing that out. Uh, but for now, really just kind of sharing our experiences as we grow and turn this business around. And I really look forward to it. So check it out, Barbells and Business. We haven't got a website yet, but just go to iTunes or anywhere else that you listen to your podcast and it should be there. Search my name, Mike Andes, uh, Sammy Anderson is the co-host and it's going to be an absolute blast. So check it out. And until next time, guys, be great because nothing else pays. This is Mike Andes. You've been listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast.